Hey guys, today I'm bringing you a brand history video on Supreme New York. This is actually a part two video, as I have already made a part one on this brand. Um, but I've been wanting to make a part two for a little while, and that's mainly because at the time when I made that part one video, um, I was really just trying to learn how to approach this whole YouTube thing, as well as that, just trying to be comfortable in front of the camera. But now that I made a video on Palace Skateboards, I thought it was the right time to approach the part two video on Supreme. I just had my haircut today, I actually shaved a few days ago. I look like a single mom who's going to pick up her kids from school, but it's okay because this is the Supreme part two video i hope you guys enjoy it i hope you guys learn some stuff and let's get right into it i remember making that supreme part one video and i read online that supreme have collaborated with brooklyn machine works to bring a cruiser back to the brand they released a total of 36 bikes all retailing at 1800 dollars and they all still sold out this was a collaboration all the way back in 1998 so that bike is going to be very rare and it's going to be very hard to find so i wouldn't get your hopes up um, in terms of looking for it or even purchasing it moving away from that point and kicking off this video i want to talk on the supreme brand's logo we all know about the infamous box logo but you may have also seen their classic logo too this is another version of their branding which is still popular even in today's collections this was integrated back in 1995 and was inspired by Andre Courage Andre Courage is a French fashion designer and his logo for his line inspired the supreme classic logo in terms of the font and the accent on the supreme wording as I mentioned in my previous video on palace skateboards palace are a brand that create VHS style videos to kind of promote the brand and, and promote the skateboarding culture um, but supreme are actually another brand that do that as well I managed to find a YouTube link to their first video shot back in 1995 so I'll link that in the description for you guys to check out so you can see where it all began with all of that. Jumping up to 2007 this was the first year Supreme collaborated with the North Face. You may be aware of how substantial the North Face is to Supreme in today's day and age because they do collaborate quite often with the brand. But in 2007 Supreme realised they can capitalise on design and function and thus brought us the North Face collaborations starting with the Genesis drop in that year of 2007. Now that Genesis drop brought us two North Face Summit series jackets and because the drop was so long ago and it entices the idea of the first North Face collaborations the jacks will be ridiculously hard to find and I promise you if you do track one down you will be looking to pay a ridiculously hefty price for it as well and um, not only that most if not all North Face collaborations kind of sell out instantly and go into the resale market and that's mainly because the collaboration is so highly respected and they provide a function you know North Face they are made for a bad weather and this and that and then obviously the design um, the design aspect on, on the side of Supreme so it is a great collaboration and it does make sense for it to sell out all the time. An example would be the following year's collaboration with the North Face on the City Print Packs and also the Spring 2010 release on the Pullover Pack. These will all be pieces you'll have to go out of your way to find and if you do find them, as I said, I think you'll be paying double double retail, you know, so it is going to be a great price tag attached to the piece, but you know, they are, they represent something, so that's why the prices are such high, uh, such a high price, um, but besides that, enjoy your travels looking for them, and yeah, that's about it. I went on the Supreme website and I went to the About section and I found a little quote in that kind of sums up the brand from their own point of view. I thought it'd be cool to throw into this video mainly because it is their own point of view and it's not a tainted perception because obviously mine could be tainted or someone else's. So yeah, let's get into that one. In April 1994, Supreme opened its doors on Lafayette Street in downtown Manhattan and became the home of New York City skate culture. At its core was the gang of rebellious young New York skaters and artists who became the store staff, crew and customers. Supreme grew, Supreme grew to be the embodiment of the downtown culture, playing an integral part in its constant regeneration. Skaters, punks, hip hop heads, the young counterculture at large all gravitated towards Supreme. While it grew into a downtown institution, Supreme established itself as a brand known for its quality, style and authenticity. Over its 18 year history, Supreme has worked with some of our generation's most groundbreaking designers, artists, photographers and musicians, all who have helped continue to define its unique identity and attitude. But coming off that last point on the location of the Supreme Store, the Supreme Store in New York was specifically chosen on Lafayette Street because of its distance to Soho, New York. Soho is an area that's praised for its culture in art and fashion, so it makes sense for James Evier to make such a smart decision. And it was a smart decision because Soho, New York is a massive capital for street style enthusiasts in today's world. Back in 1999, James Evier had an interview with the New York Times talking a little on the location of the Supreme Stores, um, and as we all know, Supreme have stores over in Japan also. In the interview, James Evier explained how the Supreme brand had grown even more popular in Japan than in America. And Japanese artist Cornelius explained in the interview how he preferred the New York Soho store over the Japanese stores. And this was because they, it was cheaper, um, it had less queues outside and it had more stock. This obviously being totally disregarded now because as we all know the Soho store had a massive queue outside of it every Thursday on the drops. Um, and Complex Style actually have a series where they talk to the consumers of Supreme on those Thursday drops and it's actually quite funny. I'll link both the interview and an episode of that series for you guys to check out so yeah. But getting back to that 
that point, one of the best things to come out of this street style culture for me is the fact that we can intertwine with other cultures. I've said it before, I'm heavily infatuated by Japanese culture and I know that they are infatuated by Western cultures to an extent and that's why you see Japanese people walking around wearing Air Jordans and stuff like that because it comes from our culture and they appreciate what we have to offer and we appreciate what they have to offer so it works out really well. It's a great positive and one of the main reasons that I'm actually interested in street style culture so it's awesome. Making one more point on Supreme Locations, I managed to find a video that High Snobbity uploaded back in 2011 and it's just a video of Mark Gonzalez painting up the London store. And I've been to that store in London so it's awesome to see a video of it being created. It's nice and short but I'll link that in the description for you guys also. Because my videos are informal, I'm able to give you informal information so if you guys check the description, I'm going to link a few things worth checking out for you guys to look at. One of them is a website that my friend shared with me so I wanted to share it with you guys. It's a tool that basically tells you how fast the pieces in the last Supreme job sold out so it's a great tool to check out because I know a lot of people are constantly interested in how fast things sell out and you'll actually be surprised to see how fast things actually sell out so you know go check that out as I said I'll link that in the description for you guys I'm also gonna add some more links to the description for you guys to check out but these are gonna be links to places where I think is the best place to pick up Supreme on resale. Um, I'm not going to mention any name because I want this information to be interchangeable um, because I, just in case one of them goes down or I'll find some more things. So um, as I said, they're all going to be in the description. All that information is going to be there. It's going to be a vital tool to this video, the description, so go and look at it. But yeah. I finally feel like I fulfilled my duties on the Supreme brand, so this is where I want to end today's video. Um, thanks so much for listening and watching, and I appreciate you guys letting me make these videos for you. Um, but besides that, I've, I've really enjoyed talking on the brand because I'm a massive fan of the brand as well. In my opinion, Supreme and Palace Skateboards are two of the biggest um, skateboarding brands in street style culture right now. So I've been really happy to make both these videos for my channel and for you guys to watch. Um, but besides that, that's where I'm ending it. Um, I'm also going to link some social handles in the description for you guys to check out. Um, just as a way to keep up to date with me if you would like to. Um, but besides that, I'll catch you guys later and thank you again.